Hey everybody, welcome back to the first Sunday of the year. This Wednesday is first Wednesday for all life groups at 7 p.m. Also, the students will be joining us in the sanctuary for this special service. Infinite's 21 day fast will begin on January 11th. This is a special time we as a church set aside to pray and fast for the new year. January 16th is Comeback Sunday. We will be having former NBA player Lawrence Funderburg as our special guest in both our 9 and 11 a.m. services. Attention all students, after two years, it's finally back. Midwinter Youth Retreat is coming up February 4th and 5th. Registration is $85 and is due by January 18th. If you have any further questions, please see Michael Condon. The Marriage Conference is back for 2022. Seating is limited, so you'll want to secure a spot as soon as you can. If you have any further questions, please see Emily Beatty or Carol Condon for further information. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Make sure to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter page for any upcoming events here at Infinite. Happy New Year!
only name that can deliver. It's happening right before your eyes.
don't you just surrender? Just surrender right now. His spirit, the spirit is here. Come on, surrender right now. Whatever's holding you back, I give it to you, God. I don't care. I don't care about past mistakes. I surrender them to you. I surrender to you right now. Fill me with your spirit, God. Wherever you point, God, I'll go. I surrender. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh Lord, can we sing it? We. their voice all over this room. We exalt thee. God's doing a work in this place. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord. Come on, just lift up your worship in this room. We exalt in there. 
God is in this place. We God, can we love him? Can we love him? Yes, Lord. We praise your name. We praise your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You may be seated. What a day, huh? What a day. What a way to end 2021. What an amazing way. Let me tell you, if you're here and and you feel like, man, I, I wish I could be baptized today. I'd love to be baptized today. Can I tell you, we're already ready for you. We've got clothes. We've got whatever you need uh, that you can make this choice. I can't think of a better way to end 2021 than being baptized and having your sins washed away in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you for being here. You know, there's a lot of churches that uh, they... They chose to go online or chose to cancel. And, and to be honest with you, I, I contemplated on what was the right move. Uh, I'm glad we had church today. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad we ended this uh, day with, I don't know how many, uh, there were six maybe, I think, that was just there and two in the first service. Uh, that's, that's a great day. That's a great day. And look at your neighbor and said, this is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Psalm chapter 37. Psalm chapter 37, verse 23, uh, as you're turning in your Bibles there or on your phone apps, however you uh, go to the Word of God in, these day and age, in this day and age, thank you, worship team, for such a fabulous job of leading us into the presence of God. One little simple verse in Psalms chapter 37, verse 23, it says, The steps of a good man are ordered. Not offered, not suggested, uh, not multiple choice, uh, but they're ordered. They're directed by the Lord, and he delights in his way. And can you say ordered? ordered. That doesn't seem very optional. Have you ever had an order? If you've served in the military and you get orders, you don't get much to say about it. You just do it, you know, and, and so... He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I want to talk just a few minutes before we close out this very last Sunday of 2021 uh, and talk to you about finishing strong. I can't imagine finishing any stronger than going down in the wonderful name of Jesus. That's awesome. That's awesome. Some people are great at starting things. And I don't know if there's anybody in here that you feel like, man, I'm a great starter. I'm not a great finisher. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to go into the first of the year. 
and everybody is a great starter. We have all these ambitions. I'm going to lose 50 pounds, and I'm going to start running every day of my life, and I'm never eating uh, bread again, you know, and, uh, you know, all these things. We start well. We have great intentions, and there's, you know, there's people that are really good starters. There's less people that are good finishers. Come on. Are you hearing me? There's less people that are good finishers. And many people are inspired to get going. Many people are, some of you are just talking, like, this is one of my favorite weeks of the year between Christmas and New Year's because I'm a goal setter. And, and so, I mean, this, this next week just, I mean, it just jacks me up. I mean, I just get really, really pumped. And I know some of you get scared when I get pumped. But, you know, I mean, I just start getting all kinds of ideas and visions of what I want to see accomplished and what I believe that God is downloading into my spirit for 2022. And, and so this week is actually one of the most exciting weeks of the year for me. And, and that is just getting ready for the next season and getting ready for the next year. But I want to talk to you about finishing strong. I've witnessed over years many start. But I, I've also witnessed many that get lost or get distracted. Uh, they don't make it all the way. And I have found that people that want the blessings of winning, they want the blessings of winning, but they struggle with staying on the course. They want, the, they want the blessings of and the goodness of God, but they get a little distracted. And, and God shows them the vision, but they don't realize that there are steps in the order. They don't realize that there are steps. And with steps, that means there's a process. That means it's going to take some time. You just don't get there uh, without taking the steps. I've never heard of a champion or an Olympian that goes to the Olympics and just wakes up one day and said, hey, I want to be in the pole vault in the Olympians. And so they just go over to wherever the Olympics are and say, hey, uh, do you have an extra pole? I would like to try this. No, there is a process there is a system. They've got to go through some very rigorous training. They've got to go through some grueling days before they ever could even qualify right. to go there. They can't just, you just can't show up. And, and on this last day of 21, I want you to know that we are in a race. We are in a race, and this is a process. And if we're going to cross the finish line, we must understand, number one, that is ordered. Number two, that there are steps, and we cannot get distracted. The Bible says there are steps, and, and we've got to take the steps. Now, I don't know, maybe there's someone in this room that has an elevator in your home, but most of us normal people, we don't have elevators in our home. And if we want to get upstairs... We've got to take the steps. And, I mean, you've got to take the steps. And if you're going to get to the next level, and if you want to go to the next level in what God has prepared for you, there are steps that you must take. Are you all awake? Yeah. All right, just want to make sure. You're making me nervous if you sit there too quietly. I don't care to necessarily wait in lines. I'm not, I'm not a good line waiter. That is not part of my uh, makeup. You know, I, I like to get there, and especially if I feel like the lines, you know, inefficiently run. Uh, you know, it's one of the things I like about Chick-fil-A. They got long lines, but, man, they get you through. And, you know, I, I'm just not a good line waiter. And, and another thing I really struggle with is this, you know, these new systems that you call and you have a problem and something has gone down and you call and, and they say, if you want this department, press 5. If you want that department, press 4. And I, but by this time, the Holy Ghost is draining out of me. And it's if you want this, press three. If you need this, press two. If you want that, press one. And then it says, if you didn't understand all that, press zero, and we'll repeat the whole thing. And I'm thinking, I just want the Internet to be turned back on. You know? I don't want the steps. I don't want the process. I just want to get the Internet back or whatever my problem is. And, and I don't like waiting. And I don't always enjoy process. I'm just being on front with you and honest with you. Maybe there's a few of my friends in here that can, that can have a witness in the spirit with me. I don't always like God ordering my steps. 
And I know you're thinking, Doug, man, he's the pastor. He should, he, should, he should enjoy that. No, I'm like you. I don't always like God ordering my steps. I like God ordering my blessings. I'm cool with that. I like God ordering the healing. I'm cool with that. You know, like, I want to come down here, pray, and, and just I want to be okay, and all everything's cool. I want to walk out and, and go to dinner and, and, and have a good day. I'm cool with the ordering of my healing and, and God answering my prayers, how I pray them, when I pray them, and when I want them to be answered. I'm cool with all that. You know, and, I, and I'm cool with God ordering my victories. You know, I'm, I'm, is there, do I have a witness in the house this morning? Come on, somebody. I'm cool with God ordering that. It's the steps that can sometimes be frustrating, that can sometimes be a little aggravating. And, and, but instead of ordering my victory, he orders steps. He orders process. He didn't offer steps. He ordered them. You know, and he said, hey, I'm going to order your steps. And I'm talking to you as we wind up 2021 and we go into 22. I want us to finish strong because I believe that God has great blessings. It's about trusting that word again. Trust. I've got to trust that he is orchestrating my life. He knows what's best for me. He knows what's best for you. And, and I, I used to run up the steps as a kid. And as a teenager, I, I, I really felt good about myself that I could skip some steps. And as I get a little older and I try that, I've had a couple times where I didn't get quite the foot up to the next step. And I fell, smacked my shins, and, and now I've got a little healthier respect for steps. And I think I just will take the step that's next. You know, and, and I, I just appreciate that next step. I remember when someone would pass me driving down the road, and, um, and they would give you that funny sign. <laughs> they didn't think you were going fast enough. And isn't it exciting when there's a red light up there, and they have to stop, and you get to meet them at the red light, and you get to say, Hi. You know, you're not any farther along than I am. And yet you made such a big deal and got yourself so emotionally out of control. You see, there are steps, and I've learned that speed is not always the end. Amen, somebody. Sometimes it may feel like people are going around you, getting ahead of you in life. You feel like, you know, God, I'm being faithful. I'm doing everything I know. But it seems like other people, God, you just seem to be blessing them. And you give them a, a fast forward, you know, direction. And, and here I am struggling. Why am I the one behind? Can I tell you today that God is ordering your steps? God is ordering your steps. He's got his hand on your life. And process matters. And if you want to finish strong, then you're going to have to trust God with the process of your life. God has a course for you. And when you take a course, it takes time to get through the course. You don't graduate overnight. You've got to take the test in order to get the grade, in order to get the degree. There is a process that happens. In an eight-month pregnancy, most I have found that they're ready to have the baby. They're done. They're, I mean, they're finished. This isn't fun anymore. It isn't, you know, like, I mean, you're like, I don't want to buy any more clothes. I don't want to, I want to be able to sleep on my stomach. You know, I mean, you got all these things that, that, you know, when they're in those final few weeks, they're like, they're done with it. But yet they understand that if I have this baby too early, that I may miss the blessing. Because the blessing may not make it because they need these extra few weeks. It's best if they have these extra few weeks. It's healthiest if they wait. See, you don't want your blessing before God has his destined time for you. Because the blessing, you get it too early, could be something that actually kills you. It could be something that actually destroys you. Your destiny of what God is doing. We're saying, God, we need this now. We don't get it. We've got to have this now. But he's saying, you're not ready for it yet. You're not ready for where I'm taking you. You've got to stay the course. God is not preparing the blessing for you. God is preparing you for the blessing. 
He's waiting for you to get ready. He's trying to get you prepared because he knows what you're going to need in order to handle what's coming your way. The blessing's already prepared. God has already got it together for you. But you've got to say, okay, God, I, I, I just want to be what you want me to be. It's about who you're becoming. It's about the process that God is working in your life. I'm praying. You see, God, ears have not heard. Years have not heard and eyes have not seen what God is preparing for this church and for you and for your family. You've got to get ready. You've got to get your faith up. You've got to stay the course. If you've fallen off the track, if you've gotten a little discouraged, if you've made some mistakes, if you've made some detours, don't quit. Just get back on because it's not the one who runs the swiftest, but it's the run one who gets all the way to the end. It's the finishing strong that matters. God has ordered your steps. Get ready 2022. I believe that God has got something great for you and for this church. We're coming 2022, whether you like it or not. I'm not speaking death. I'm not speaking sickness. I'm speaking life over this church. I'm speaking victory over this church. I believe that God has a plan for every one of us. God is preparing you. For what he has for you. But there is a process. Don't give up. Don't get distracted. Don't quit. Because the process is a little tough. Some days are not easy. I'll, I'll give you that. Some seasons are not easy. I'll give you that. But don't you dare quit. Don't you dare quit. You keep moving forward. Don't quit because God has his design for your life. God is trying to get you ready so when you get there, you can handle it. God is waiting on someone to say yes. God is waiting on someone to say, okay, I'm giving 100%. No more 95%. No more 98%. God, I'm surrendering my entire life over to you because I know that you've got a plan for my life. I've done it long enough my own way. God, I'm going to let you take over, and I'm going to trust you. I'll say yes to Jesus today. If it's baptism and you've been dealing with me, I'm going to say yes to baptism today. I'm going to finish strong. Come on, somebody. You're going to finish with me? If you ever go and need brain surgery from a brain surgeon, the last thing you want to hear in the middle of surgery is oops. You're going to pray and trust God that that doctor has gone through the proper process to get his degree. And he's been through the proper training to get his degree. You see, process matters. It matters. And, and, and I, I, I want to encourage you to be patient with the process. The last thing you ever want is to get to the destiny that God has destined for you before you were supposed to arrive. Don't trip over the steps. Can I say that again to you today? Don't trip over the steps. Every step matters. It's taking you somewhere. It's lifting you higher every step. God wants to make sure that you can handle the steps before you arrive on that big stage. You've got to watch the steps. You've got to watch the process. Some of you have resented what you've gone through. You felt like it's been unfair what you've gone through. Some of you have thought, man, this wasn't fair. This wasn't right. This was, this was done unjust to me. I did, that, this, this didn't make any sense. Can I tell you that God has ordered your steps, and he's got your life, and he's working through you, and it's going to be fine. I want to encourage you. Finish strong. Just because we're at the end of 21 doesn't mean we're finished. We're just getting started. We're just getting going. God's got great things for this church. As I watched this church this morning, we, we need space, obviously. And, 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 and so I, I'm praying, God, I want that property over there. I want that property behind there. And I don't want a debt. So, God, you've got to do something again pretty amazing for this church because we need space. I would love it if this would happen this afternoon to close out this year. 
that if the New Albany company say, hey, we just happen to see your online service, and we just want to bless you. We've got land, and, and, and we just want to give it to you. But no, there's a system. There's a process. There, there are steps to get there, and God knows when we need it. God knows when we need it. You've got to get ready for where God is wanting to take you. You see, David was anointed king, but he somehow got out in the cave. He somehow got out in the field. He somehow had, had, had people coming after him. And I'm sure David was probably thinking, now, this doesn't seem very kingly to me. You know, I'm hiding in a cave from my life. This doesn't seem very kingly. I thought we were talking like a kind of a king that was in a palace. I thought we were talking about the kind of king, you know, that had royalty around him and, and had jewels and thrones and, and, and crowns. And I thought maybe I misunderstood, the, you know, the king thing. You know, I just don't understand, I guess, what king is because I'm hiding from my life in the cave. He didn't understand there's a process that you have to go through in order to become the king. There are things that he has to go through. Same thing with Joseph. You know, Joseph had all these wonderful dreams. He told, tells his brother, he tells his father, hey, these are my dreams. Your, your sheaves are going to bow down to my sheaves, and, and this is what it's going to be. And all of a sudden, Joseph finds himself in a pit. And then he gets out of the pit. He's sold into slavery. That doesn't seem like anybody's going to be bowing to you. You know, then all of a sudden, he finds himself being lied upon and finds himself in prison for years. For years this went on. And I'm sure Joseph was asking himself, maybe, I, maybe that wasn't a dream. Maybe I just had too much pizza. Maybe something, you know, I mean, something's wrong because this doesn't seem right to me. And yet, Joseph, just like you, just like me. Sometimes we read these stories and, and it doesn't seem that long. But, you know, everybody in this book, they've had to go their steps just like you, just like me. They've got the process. They've got to work through. If I, when our children were young, we, we told them, we had, we had some deals with all of them that, you know, if they accomplished some certain things and, and, and they lived by some things that our family stood for and, and, and they kept their life clean, kept their good friends and did well in their school and, and all those kind of things. We had this little list for them. We told them, when you get to be, you know, old enough to buy a car, your mom and I will help you get a car. It'll be a used one. It won't be brand new, but you, at least you won't be humiliated when you're driving down the road. And, um, and so... Uh, but if they would have said, hey, Dad, I'm 8, I really don't want to wait till I'm 16 or 17, I would like my car now. And if I would give them that car right now, I'd say, okay, okay, here's your car. And you see this little 8-year-old who can hardly see over the steering wheel driving down the road, it's probably not going to go well. <laughs> and, and in fact, chances are really high that he could lose his life. And, and, it, and again, it wasn't the blessing. The car was fine. The car was fine. The road was fine. It wasn't the road he was traveling. The road was fine. It wasn't the other drivers. You see, he wasn't ready for the blessing. It, it was important that he understood there are steps, there are processes that you've got to get to before I ha just hand you the keys to a, a, a several thousand pound vehicle that you're driving down the road. And God's looking at you. He's looking at me and saying, I've got you. I've got you. Just settle down. It's coming. It's coming. But there's some steps that I want you to take. It is the chaos. Everybody say chaos. chaos. It's the chaos or the process that creates the conqueror within you. Can I say that again? Yes. It's the chaos that produces the conqueror or builds the conqueror within you. It's the disappointments. It's the rejection. It's the heartache. It's the pain that builds the conqueror within you. Stay the course. Keep running. I'm not here to veer to the left. I'm not here after these years to veer to the right. I'm not just waiting to get it all together. I don't have time to get it all together. I just want to stay the course. I just want to focus on him. And I want to focus on the steps that he's ordered for my life. And I want to walk the walk that he has designed for me. Amen. 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 I plan to finish strong. And here we are. Week number 52, Sunday number 52, 
and we're finishing this year out strong. And I believe it's important that you finish well before we go into the next season that God wants us to go. Because I'm excited about 2022. In fact, I, I encourage you next year or next week, well, and next year, uh, to be here uh, because it's going to be Vision Sunday. And I just want to share with you what's on my crazy heart that I think God wants to do in 2022. Because I believe it's going to be, look around, look what God's doing right now. Now, and just imagine what God is going to do in 2022. Yes. You were ordered by God to be here on this planet. You think you're an accident. You think, I don't care if you were an accident with your parents, you're not an accident with God. You're not an accident with God. You are destined to be here for this moment. He has ordered your steps. I plan on going into 2022 with determination. I plan on going into this coming year with a heart set on the things of God. Some of you decided today that you're not just going to coast. You decided today, I'm going down. I'm getting closer to him. I'm going to walk with him. I'm putting this word in my heart because I'm going to finish strong. Yes, I don't care what anyone else thinks. I don't care what my siblings think. I don't care what my friends think. I don't care what my family thinks. I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to keep walking. I don't care who decides that they're weary and tired and gets off the track. Now, I, I um, ran a couple 5Ks this summer, and uh, I'm not the fastest. And, but I learned a couple things. I ran them about a, a month or so apart. And the one was here in New Albany. And, uh, and I was, like, all pumped. And I had a friend that was going to run with me. To, I told him, I said, come just in case I pass out on the way. You can pick me up and slide me over into the grass or something. You know, and, and so I, I'm, I'm, I, I just get pumped. I mean, there's, like, probably, I think, 800,000 people out there. And everybody's, I mean, everybody's excited. We got our little numbers and everything. And, and I'm, like, I'm official. I'm a runner. And so, I mean, I just, now I tell myself, just stay the course. Don't get too excited. And, I mean, everybody, I see little tiny kids, and I see little grandmas, and, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And so they, they shoot the gun, and everybody just takes off. And, and so I'm telling myself, don't run too fast. Don't run too fast. And so, but I saw all these little tiny kids running faster than me. And I, worse yet, I saw these little old ladies running faster than me. And I'm thinking, I've got to at least run with the old ladies. You know, this is embarrassing. So I'm running, and I'm thinking I'm doing well, and I get the first mile, my little headphone kicks in, and I've set a record. I've run the fastest mile that I've run since I've been this age, for sure, in the last 30 years, probably. And I'm thinking, whoa, I'm crushing this. I'm crushing this. And then, then about a quarter of a mile or so in, I felt like someone slapped ankle weights on my feet, and someone jammed camp cotton down my throat. And I mean, I'm just thinking, oh my goodness. I mean, it's flat. I'm not on no hill, but I feel like I'm running up a mountain. And, and I'm thinking, what is the problem? And at that point, I could give a flip. I know I shouldn't say that as a pastor, but I didn't care. I didn't care if some old lady ran past me. I was just trying to breathe and make it all the way to the end. I finished that race. And the next the next month, I had another 5K, and I told myself, don't you be a sucker and do that again. Don't you fall for them little kids and those old ladies. You just run your little race. And so I did. I got out there, and I just ran my little race, and I, I, I kept looking. Don't you run faster than that. Don't you run faster than that. I don't care what everybody else is doing. You just run your little race. And so I did. I saw the old ladies pass me up again. I saw the little tiny kids pass me up again. And I said, I'm not falling for it. You're not doing that to me again. And I just kept running my little race, my little nursing home shuffle. I'm just going all the way down, you know. At about two miles, I saw those people just sitting on the side of the grass. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, you fell for it too. I did that last time. No, you realize there's a race that you've got to run. 
And you've got to just run. Forget what other people are doing. Forget where they are in their life. And just say, God, you've ordered my steps. And I just want to follow after you. I just want to please you. God, they may be getting ahead. It may look like they're getting ahead. But I'm going to finish strong. This isn't just about getting baptized today. I'm going to be here next year this week on this time. And I'm going to be lifting my hands, loving God, worshiping God, singing. I'm going to be serving somewhere in this church. I'm going to be making a difference. Oh, yes, come on. We've got to finish strong. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 says, But those who endure to the end will be saved. It doesn't matter if you've fallen down. It doesn't matter if you're sitting on the sidelines of life and you've got your tail kicked and everything is falling apart and your life is nowhere what you thought it was going to be. Everything around you looks different and you're taking big deep breaths. Get back on the track and just, you don't have to run fast. Just keep moving forward. Just say, I'm going to make it. God's ordered my steps. Can I tell you, I honestly don't believe that you are here by accident today. I believe that God has so strategically, I don't think we're in this building. I don't think God gave us this building. I don't think any of that is by accident. I don't think that New Beginnings Church, that were, that were, they, they were part of this miracle. And, and, and I know that they were, they were down in Pickerington, and I'm sure they were thinking, what is up? How do we get here? But see, God is orchestrating their steps. He's orchestrating our steps. He's orchestrating your step. And now you are here. You think, I don't know why I'm here. I don't even like this city. I don't even like to be here. But God is ordering your steps because he's got a plan for you. Amen, somebody. We've got to run our race. Finishers are saved. He said in Matthew, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. It's the finishers. That are saved. It's the finishers. Don't quit. There will be some people who didn't like the way God ordered their steps. And they're going to quit. Don't quit. There will be some who didn't care for the process. Don't quit. Keep running. There will be some who thought it was quicker. There was a quicker and easier route. Oh, I don't have to do all that. I'm going to go for an easier route. You know, uh, let me tell you. I did another race this summer. It was a 10K. I'd never done one in my life. And it was out in the woods. And they didn't mark the trails. <laughs> so Dr. Anthony and I are running out in the middle of the wilderness, it seems. And all of a sudden, we see a bunch of people coming back. Us. Oh, that's not the way. That's not the way. Now, we're about five, six miles into this thing. And I'm thinking, all right, then what is the way? Because we've just out here... And I'm about to throw up, you know, and you're telling me that I'm running in the wrong direction. They said, oh, go back there. You'll see a couple trees. I'm like, we're in the middle of a forest. And so we didn't run a 10K. We ran more than a 10K because we were running around in circles or something out there in the middle of the woods. You think there's an easier trail. You think that, oh, it'll be easier over here. They don't require so much over here. This isn't all necessary. Would you stay the course? This, this, this is a road map to us. I'm not looking for an easier way. I'm not trying to veer left or veer right. I'm trying to make heaven. I want to finish strong, somebody. Don't look for the easy route. Look for the steps that God has ordered. Pastor, the world's just getting so crazy. It's so divisive. Run. Run. Keep running. Pastor, over there at the track, they're running on, looks easier. It just seems more pleasant. Would you keep running? Would you just keep running? Pastor, you know, I got hurt by Johnny. I don't know if I can make it. No, would you keep running? Pastor, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't understand why I didn't get that position. Would you please just keep running? Because it's those that finish strong. Well, Pastor, I didn't care for that kind of music. And, 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 and so, no, just keep running. Well, Pastor, that, that church was a little bit of a distance, too far to drive. Can I tell you, a church alive is worth the drive keep running just keep going because it's the ones who finish it's the ones who finish 
that are saved. Paul talks to Timothy. And he says, I have fought the good fight. Paul's at the end of his life. He's sitting in prison. And he's writing to Timothy. And he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have remained faithful. Oh, when it gets all said and done, that's what I want to be said over me. They were faithful. They were faithful. And now the prize awaits me. What prize? The crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Can I tell you that everybody that finishes gets to win? Everybody that finishes gets to win. You just got to keep running. Even if you've fallen off, even if you've just got distracted, even if life has dealt you some bad, deathly blows, yeah. get back up and run. Can we stand this morning? I'm asking that every person in this building make a fresh commitment. Make a fresh commitment. I know we're week number 52 of 2021. But I'm asking you to make a fresh commitment today to say, I'm going to finish strong. I'm not, I'm not quitting. I'm not slacking off. I'm not looking for an easy ride. I'm not looking for an easy route. God has ordered your steps. Yes. Carol and I have been married 35 years. And we've had some deep disappointments in life. We've had some moments where there were detours that we just, we never saw it coming. Not everything turned out like we planned or dreamed. Not everything was just like we would have wanted it if we could have ordered it ourselves. But see, we didn't get to order it. God ordered our steps. And, and I would say probably the answer to it all. And I'll be honest with you, there was a few times I thought, Wow. God, I didn't see this. I didn't understand why this had to be. I remember one particular season, and we were working at a church in Dayton, and our home wouldn't sell here in the Columbus area. And Carol and I were in our living room on our knees just praying. Well, Carol was praying. I was kind of complaining. I was giving God a piece of my mind. I said, God, what, what's up with this? I mean, we, we're driving 87 miles one way, six days a week. God, I need you to sell this house. Why, why aren't you selling this home? And, and I'm, I'm just giving God a piece of my mind, and Carol's in the other chair. God, please don't strike him dead. <laughs> but I didn't understand it. And interestingly enough, a couple years down the road, a couple years down the road, it all seemed to make a lot more sense looking back how God was orchestrating our steps and he was preparing. See, God knew 30 years ago that we would one day be in New Albany pastoring a church that was only seven and a half, eight years old. He knew way down the road. See, he knows your way down the future. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through right now and says, oh, She's going to love this when she gets to right here. Oh, he's going he's gonna to be so thankful when we get to this moment in his life. He's going to see how I've been protecting him, how I've been keeping him. He thought this was the worst thing ever, but he didn't realize that I'm ordering his steps for his best days, for your best days. Some of you, you've got a lot of resentment. Because God hasn't answered some of your prayers yet. Can I encourage you to keep running? Can I encourage you to keep trusting and keep saying, God, I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. I know, God, I don't know how. I don't know when. There's been many times I just say, okay, God, I'm just going to trust you. Because this hurts right now. This hurts right now. It, it doesn't make any sense. I don't see how you're getting any glory out of my pain, any glory out of my suffering. But I'm going to finish strong. If I have to crawl across the line, I'm going to finish. If I have to limp 
across the line, I'm going to finish. And let me just say this. If I see you crawling or limping across the line, I want you to know I'm your brother. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to help you. And we're going to finish together because my job is to make sure you make heaven no matter what. Don't get caught in the distractions. I see you're limping. Please don't ever get offended if you have me call you and say, where have you been? Where have you been? I've been missing you. I'm missing you. You got to make it. You got to make it. Don't get distracted. Come on. We can go. We can get back up we can make it because we're going to finish strong come on somebody that's why it's important to stay in life groups because there will be days that you're discouraged there will be days that you just can't figure it out but when you get the life group, you get around some good, strong people that they say, you know what? You can make it. I went through something like that a few years ago. And look what God has done in my life. I want you to make it. Will you come to life group with me? Will you connect with me? See, we need each other. If we're going to finish strong, we need each other. Can you bow your heads? Every eye closed. And I want to pray one more prayer over you in 2021. And then we're going to just take a moment for those who would like to give your life to Jesus Christ and say, you know what? I'm getting on this track again. But I'm going to pray for you. And then when I'm done, we're going to, the, the worship team's going to sing. And I'm going to open up this altar as we close out this day. Father, we love you. We thank you that you have ordered our steps. Because we know that you know what's best for us. And so, God, I'm praying right now that you will speak to every heart. Lord, I pray that this word will pierce every heart in this room and let them know how much you love them and how much you have their lives in your hands. God, you are orchestrating something beautiful. God, you're going to turn, Lord, their sorrow into rejoicing. Lord, you're going to turn their tears into laughter. Lord, you've got great things. Help us, God. Give us the courage to, Lord, keep running this race that we may finish strong. And I pray this in Jesus' name, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. We have something we do here, then we open up this area. God moves everywhere, so, I mean, if you're just really comfortable right there, but I also think when you just take a step out of your comfort zone, there's just something I think that God just smiles, that they're serious about it. They're really serious about it. But I want to open this altar right now and give everybody one last chance to say, God, I'm running this race. If you'll come right now and say, Lord, I'm going to run this race. I'm going to get serious about this more than ever before. I'm not looking for easy roads. I'm not looking for anything simple, God. I'm going to run my race. I'm going to get serious about the things of you. God, I want you more than anything in this world. God, I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Yes. Come on, all over this building. Why don't you just lift up your hands and say, God, I recommit my life to you today. I want you more than anything. I want you in my family. I want you in my children. Lord, I want you in my life. I want you in my business. God, I've had some setbacks. I've had some discouraging moments. But God, I'm coming to you because I want you more than anything in this world. Lord, I don't care what's going on around me. I'm going to lift up you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to become serious about the things of you. Come on, church, all over this building. Take a minute. Take a few minutes as we end this very last Sunday and commit your life all over again to him and say, God, I love you.
strong. And just raise your hand. Just raise your hands and just connect with the Lord. He is here. He is here. Hallelujah. And if you actually reach for Him, you, you're going to feel His touch. Hallelujah. Why don't you finish strong and just praise Him with all of your mind, with all of your voice. Hallelujah. just been so good to this church yes. and I thank you for getting out on the day after Christmas and you could have sat home you could have there's a lot of excuses we could have had for today and but I thank you for getting out in fact we almost contemplated you know will anybody even come to look at this place <laughs> you know and, and and just think of the seven or eight people that were baptized today and yes <laughs> All of heaven is rejoicing over what's happened here today. All of heaven is rejoicing. I want to ask Carol to just close out this day. We love you all. We thank you. And uh, we're looking for exciting 2022. I, I pray that you will be here next week for Vision Sunday. It's always an exciting Sunday here as we kick off the year and get a fresh start. Uh, Lawrence Funderburg will be here in a couple of weeks on January 16th. Uh, if you don't know him, uh, you probably don't follow much sports, uh, but, but Lawrence is a former OSU player and former NBA player with Sacramento Kings, and it's going to be a great day. We're going to call that Comeback Sunday, and I want to encourage you to get your habits right, because if you get your habits right, uh, then all life begins to turn around for you. When you make, when you make great choices, 
and you make great decisions week in, week out, uh, there's a compounded effort that begins to uh, work on your behalf, all right? Now, wasn't that fun? I love that. I think church should always be fun. I just, I just am so thankful for his presence and such a wonderful day today in both of our services. God met us here as he always does. And I thank you all for showing up on the day after Christmas for being here as we worship the Lord together. If this is your first time at Infinite Church, we welcome you this morning. gift for you. All we would like for you to do is there's a connect card at the front at both entrance or exits as you're leaving here today. Also, you can simply text 66 to 97,000. You can fill that out there. We have a gift in the center of the foyer that we would love to give to you before you leave today. And stick six is a challenge that we do here at Infinite. We invite you to stick around with us for six weeks as you choose the church that you would like to call home. We know that's a very serious decision and we take it serious as well. And we invite you to stick around with us. We'll get to know you and you get to know us. And, and it's just fun living the Lord together. And then as we leave today, we have our final act of worship. It is our time that we return our tithe back to him and we give our offerings. And on the screen, you can choose one of the, the methods of giving that best suits you. Or you're welcome to place the gift in the box at the black box at both doors. Also, we know that some are trying to get their giving in by the end of 2021. You can do that today. If you know that it's something that you need to give during the week, would you please see Emily Beatty? And I know she is here. I'm just not exactly sure where she is. See her. Um, she is over here somewhere back there. Um, and so if not, I will, if you come find me, I will take you to her if you have any questions on that. And, and we'll make sure that that gets in before the end of the year. So let's bow our heads. Lord, we are so honored to be in your presence today. To be with you again, Lord, and, and having the privilege of standing side by side and worshiping corporately together in a public place, Lord, is something we never want to take for granted. We thank you, Lord, for those that went down in your precious name today, Lord. And as the sins were remitted, Lord, with your name applied to their life, we're so thankful. We pray for the start of repentance, Lord. Heaven rejoices over repentance, and we do too. We thank you for every person, Lord, that came to you asking for forgiveness today. What an amazing start they will have in their journey to salvation, Lord. I pray for each and every one of us to have a repentant heart, Lord. As we leave here today, will you please go with us? And Lord, in every action, every word, every deed that we do, may it always honor you and please you. In your precious name, we pray. Amen.